Each year, 1.3 million people die in road traffic accidents. Even though there has been an immense advancement in the field of vehicle safety technology, road casualties remain a common occurrence in almost all countries. To improve the situation, many organizations evaluate safety performances of new cars and release their findings to the general public. Hi, my name is Sid, this is Crashworthy, and today I will teach you how to pick a safe vehicle. The number of road casualties in the US and Europe peaked around 1970. Since then, there has been a steady decline due to technical advancement, legislative changes, public education and better road design. However, the WHO finds that for young people under 29 years, it is still more likely to die in a road traffic accident than from any other cause. Therefore, the goal of mitigating crashes is as relevant as ever. If you want to do your bit in the story and make a safe choice for your next car, there are a number of organizations whose websites you should visit. I will walk you through the process of screening available information and explain the relevance of each part. You can find all links in the description of this video, so you can start your own research on the vehicle that interests you personally. But first, let's get an overview of these organizations, which provide us with the information we need. Just like many other aspects of modern society, the field of vehicle safety is heavily regulated in most nations. Just have a look at this huge list of global safety laws. Each of these laws demands numerous functionalities from passenger vehicles. Every number that you see here represents their own mostly very complex set of requirements, which as a whole ensure a base level safety for everyone. Each series production car has to comply with a set of rules that is in place in the country in which it is sold. For the US, for example, these rules are called Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. So doesn't this mean, whichever car I decide on, that it will be safe? Well, mostly yes, but there's a rule that applies to every aspect of life. You can always do more. That is why authorities, insurances and motor vehicle organizations have formed safety rating institutes. Except for two of them, these are called NCAPs, which stands for New Car Assessment Program. The historically first NCAP is active in the United States and therefore nowadays referred to as US NCAP, and it's mandated by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA. It is accompanied by the safety ratings given out by the IIHS, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. A glance towards Europe reveals that their rating institute is called the Euro NCAP, which is currently the most diverse of the NCAPs and a model rating for many other nations. In this video, we will solely focus on the US and Europe. Nevertheless, it's interesting to know that there are more ANCAPs in different regions. Namely, these are the Australian, Japanese, Korean, Latin and ASEAN ANCAP. In China, they have an ANCAP as well, and in addition, the CIASI, the Chinese Insurance Automotive Safety Index, which takes large parts of their procedures from the IIHS rating. There's also a retrofitted parent organization, the Global ANCAP, which loosely mediates between the different regional branches and tries to promote smaller assessment programs. All of these ratings are commissioned by the authorities of their respective countries, which try to extend the requirements of their existing laws by releasing these safety ratings. The two organizations that stand out from this are the IIHS and the CIASI, which are insurance-driven and might therefore stray a little further from the law with their test procedures. Now, why all this diversity, you might ask? Firstly, because every authority wants to make sure that manufacturers do their very best to implement advanced technology in their country, and not just other places around the world. And second, because road traffic differs in every region. For example, highway medians tend to be a lot more spacious in the US than in Europe, which allows for saving on guardrails on large distances. But in turn, this also bears a greater risk of rollovers, because cars can drive off the pavement and get caught in loose soil. So therefore, you will find an evaluation of a vehicle's rollover tendency on the US NCAP, but not on the Euro NCAP. One more example are SUVs. They are more common in America than over in Europe, which is why you will find larger and heavier impact barriers in the US, as shown by these selected frontal and side impact trolleys. Now, what do these NCAPs actually do, and where can you get the results? These organizations will conduct a number of different tests, including high-speed crashes, child protection, pedestrian protection, and tests of active driver assistance. NCAPs visualize the results of those tests on a star scale, with no stars being the worst and five stars being the best outcome. 
The IIHS uses a different method, where possible results are the protection levels good, acceptable, marginal, and poor. Both of these scales will be supplemented with additional awards, for example for outstanding performance or the best results in a given year. In this video, we will research information through the US NCAP, the IIHS, and the Euro NCAP. The vehicle we will be using as an example is the fourth generation BMW X5. Seeing that there are so many different NCAPs, I recommend taking your local rating more serious than the ones from other regions. The reason is that the results may vary depending on different vehicle equipment parts, which sometimes differ from country to country. Before we actually start with the website of the US NCAP, it is also convenient to know that the US NCAP results will also be visible on the Monroney label, which is a window sticker that has to be displayed on every new vehicle that you find at US car dealers. It will give you an overall rating score, a separate frontal crash, side crash and rollover risk score. In case NHTSA recognized any safety concerns, you will find a small additional remark next to the scores. The safety box might be empty in case the car hasn't been rated yet, but in this case you probably won't find anything about it on the US NCAP website either. Now let's start with our online search. Go ahead and open up nhtsa.gov. Up top you will see different tabs on numerous topics, such as impaired driving, properly adapting your seat and interior to your body size, or information on child seats. All of these are worth putting some time into. At this point, we want to check out the Ratings tab. Under the Ratings tab you will notice that there are also tests on car seats and tires. For now we will stay on the Vehicle tab and search for the 4th generation BMW X5, for example a model year 2020. Ok, right away you can tell that the model year 2020 does not offer certain active safety systems as standard. The systems listed here will give you a warning in case the vehicle thinks you're about to crash into an obstacle or other vehicle, will warn you when you're leaving your lane without intention, automatically applies the brakes right before a crash becomes unavoidable, or regulates your brake pressure in case you are not braking hard enough to avoid an imminent crash. We definitely want those systems in our vehicle and also we don't want to go through the trouble of checking optional equipment on every single car we research, so we will check whether the model year 2021 might have those systems as standard. And as it turns out, it does, so let's stick with the model year 21. The reason why you see multiple versions of this vehicle here is because there might be performance differences between the different versions. In this case, the versions are the all-wheel drive, the rear-wheel drive, as well as the hybrid and the performance model. In BMW's case, those will be the M models. Right away you see the summary of the safety rating score for the different categories. And if there was a safety concern, it would also be listed right here next to the test score in which it occurred. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Let's start by checking the crash results. NHTSA conducts one frontal crash, two side crashes and one rollover evaluation. Each gets their own star rating. For the frontal crash, the car is propelled straight into a rigid wall that overlaps the entire vehicle front at 35 miles or 56 km per hour. There are two passengers, one average sized male in the driver's seat and a small female in the front passenger seat. Both of their injury measurements are translated into star ratings, which are then combined into a frontal crash star rating. The side score consists of two side crashes. In one, the vehicle is impacted by a so-called crabbed barrier at 38.5 miles or 62 km per hour with an angle of 63 degrees. The frontal average male and rear passenger small female each get their star ratings, which are then combined to the side barrier rating. The second crash is a pole impact. Here the vehicle is propelled sideways into a rigid 10 inch thick pole at 32 km per hour or slightly less than 20 miles per hour. The injury measurements are generated by a small female in the driver's seat. The two combined driver scores and the one rear passenger scores are added up to an overall side crash rating. The rollover rating is generated by the calculation of the so-called static stability factor. This factor depends on the height of the center of gravity of the vehicle and the vehicle's track width. The three star ratings are multiplied with their respective weighing factors and added up to form the overall star rating score, which you find at the top of the page. In the case of the BMW X5, the four frontal crash, five side crash and four rollover stars are combined to an overall four star rating. Now the crucial question is, is this good? In order to judge that, we will have to look at other comparable vehicles too, which we will do in a second, but first we will go over what else can be found on this page. 
There is more information about the active safety systems, which we already talked about on the initial search screen. All four of them are standard equipment on this vehicle. Below that, you will find a list of the available seatbelt, airbag and child safety functions. These seem pretty standard for a modern vehicle. This concludes the safety information on this page. At this point, you could leave the page if you only wanted to know about the safety performance. But there is more to be found here, which can give you a general idea about the overall quality of the vehicle. You can see the number of recalls, open investigations and complaints linked to this vehicle. A complaint is a direct input from a customer to NHTSA and is usually about a problem that might lead to a safety hazard at some point. However, it has not been reported multiple times because that would most likely lead to an investigation and you would find the topic under the investigations tab and not the complaints tab. NHTSA will list the complaint with its original description right here. As you can see, in this case, they complain about the blind spot detection, which supposedly doesn't work properly on their vehicle. Below, you will find a list of vehicles that are connected to this type of complaint. In this case, it's just the 21X5. Recalls are problems found by the manufacturer, which are directly linked to compliance with the law or in any other way serious enough that it needs to be fixed right away. This could either be because a software or hardware part doesn't work as expected, or like in this case, parts might have been mixed up during production, which would of course also result in a not working part. In case of a recall, manufacturers will contact the customer and ask them to take their vehicle to a dealer, which will repair or replace the part in question free of charge. When you buy a vehicle, it's always a good idea to check whether the dealer or previous owner has fixed all of these recall problems. Below here, it will again give you a list of the vehicles that are affected by this story. An open investigation is a problem that has usually been reported to the authorities multiple times, but which has not been definitively proven. For example, in this case, taken from a 2020 Chevy Tahoe, there have been multiple cases where a frontal crash supposedly did serious damage to the vehicle, but the airbags didn't deploy. The technical background of this is a bit unclear, at least to someone who's only seeing this information right here. The reported crashes might just not have been serious enough to make an airbag deployment necessary, but on the other hand, you might also actually be looking at a malfunctioning part. As long as the responsible authority is uncertain about this, this problem will be listed here under Open Investigations. In the X5's case, there are no investigations, which is, of course, a good thing. Manufacturers' communications might be on a variety of different topics. It might be a smaller problem with the vehicle that's not serious enough to cause a recall. It might be a manufacturer informing about a certain behavior of the vehicle that is normal, but persistently received as odd by many customers, or any other type of smaller issue. In this case, this seems to be about connection issues of the BMW's connected drive systems. Below here, there will again be a list of the affected models. Now, this sums up the information that you can gather on this page. If you want to dive even deeper into the crash tests, you can do so by going to the crash ratings tab and clicking on the technical report. This will open up a different page, which redirects you to the vehicle crash database. Here you will have to input the make and model again. After that, you can download the crash videos, pictures and detailed reports on all conducted tests. But this is a topic for another video. After we have gathered our information, it is now time to decide whether the X5 is a good choice. To do this, we have to compare to results of similar vehicles. I've selected a list of vehicles that you might also consider if you're interested in an X5. This list is by no means complete, it's just an example of how you can go about comparing your personal list of favorite vehicles. You will notice that a 5 star rating, which the X5 unfortunately did not achieve, is definitely possible. In fact, in this selection there are only 3 vehicles that got 4 stars. On the bright side, the X5 is one of only 2 cars here that has all active safety equipment as standard. Having 4 or even 3 stars on the rollover rating is absolutely common in this vehicle class, since SUVs with their high center of gravity are naturally more prone to tipping over. One car stands out in this list, the Tesla Model X. Since it's an electric vehicle that is powered by a heavy battery which is located on the underside of the body, the center of gravity is naturally low above ground. This reflects a reduced risk of rollover, which you will most likely find for all purely electric vehicles. In the side crash column you will find evidence that larger, heavier vehicles usually do better in side crashes than small vehicles. This is because the trolley that is used for the barrier side impact is supposed to represent an average sized vehicle. The higher the mass of the impacted vehicle, the lower the acceleration that it is going to experience from this trolley impact, the better for the passengers sitting in the vehicle. The frontal impact is a different story. 
since an impact into an unyielding wall is physically the same as crashing into an oncoming vehicle that is exactly as heavy and exactly as fast as you, this test is just as hard for an SUV as for any other car. That is why you see here that a 5 star result is not a given. If you put all these pieces together, there is a clear winner in this selection. The Tesla Model X is the only vehicle that checks all the boxes – frontal, side, rollover and active safety. However, the choice between electric or internal combustion engine is a choice that should not be made solely based on crash safety ratings. If you want to stick with the good old gasoline, the Volvo XC90 is the perfect choice on this list, basically only lacking the perfect rollover score of the Tesla, for natural reasons that I explained earlier. Again, I want to say that this is a randomly selected list of vehicles. There might be vehicles out there with results that are just as great. This is actually the one downside of the US NCAP website. Finding the best results of a given vehicle class is a bit inconvenient and requires some research. In this field, the IIHS sets a much better example. But before we get to their website, take your time and also compare some of the recall numbers. Ok, let's switch over. The IIHS website, in my opinion, does a little bit better of a job visualizing and explaining the different tests. Also, it is much easier for you to find vehicles that excel in their overall safety performance. For the purpose of explaining the contents, we will stick with the BMW X5, but we will switch to the Model Year 22. The reason is that the 22 has earned a top safety pick, which the 21 didn't. We will get into what this award is about in a minute. First, let's check out the tests conducted by IHS. We get two frontal crashes and one side crash. The two frontal crashes are different from the US NCAP full width frontal impact. The small overlap tests run the vehicle into a rigid barrier at 40 miles or 64 km per on the driver and passenger side. Their overlap is only 25% as opposed to the full width on the NHTSA test. On the driver side test there will only be one average sized male driver. On the passenger side test there will be the same type of dummy on both of the front seats. The moderate overlap takes the vehicle at the same speed with the same driver dummy up against a deformable barrier with a bigger overlap of 40% on the driver's side. The deformability of the barrier simulates the crumple zone of the crash opponent. For the side impact, the vehicle is struck by a 1500 kg trolley barrier at 31 miles or 50 km per So it's slower than the Nizza's barrier, but a little heavier and a bit more form aggressive. There are two small females in the driver and rear passenger seats. IHS will increase the impact speed and barrier mass in 2023. By scrolling down, you will find detailed results for all of these tests. You can see the different outcomes of the dummy readings down to the body parts and also a performance assessment of the restraint systems, which tells you whether they worked properly and restrained the dummies effectively. You will also notice that there is a verdict on the vehicle structure and safety cage for all of the tests. This is one of the key differences between the IHS's and NHTSA's tests. The frontal tests with their smaller overlaps are particularly intense for the vehicle structure, while NHTSA's full width test is tougher on the restraint systems. Also, IHS's more form aggressive side impact barrier is a bit tougher on the structure than NHTSA's barrier, all the more so in the future after IHS will have bumped up the speed and weight in 23. Take your time and scroll through the well documented results of these tests, and continue with even more background information by clicking the link below each test. The rollover safety is addressed differently here. IIHS will conduct a roof crush test in which the vehicle has to resist a force at least four times as big as its own weight to earn a good rating. This ensures that you will have enough room to survive if you should ever roll over. IIHS additionally evaluates rear end collisions. This is done in two steps. In the first step, IIHS does a geometric assessment of the front row seats to decide whether they offer good support to occupants in rear end collisions. Seats that do well on this test will also get a sled test, which means that one of the seats will be placed on a test apparatus that propels the seat forward to simulate a rear end collision. In this collision, the vehicle stands still and is impacted by a vehicle of the same weight with 20 miles or 30 km power. By means of an average sized male dummy, IHS evaluates how well the seat supports the torso and the head. To score in the crash avoidance and mitigation category, the vehicle must have an automatic braking system. This system has to meet certain criteria and pass multiple dynamic tests against other vehicles and pedestrians in different scenarios. Notice that the rating scale differs from the overall scheme on these tests and also that there might be different trim levels with varying performances. An evaluation that can only be found on the IIHS website is the headlights rating. This will give you information on how far the useful illumination distances in various scenarios are 
and whether these differ for available trim levels. The last category is about ease of use of child seats. The so-called latch system, lower anchors and tethers for children, is intended to make the installation of child seats as easy as possible to ensure their correct use. The available anchor points on the vehicle are tested for their accessibility, required installation force, convenience of location and possible confusion factors. Now, overall the 22X5 sets a good example except for the lower trim headlights. That is why the vehicle earns a 22 top safety pick. If the lower trim headlights also got at least an acceptable rating, this would even be a top safety pick plus. Let's go back to the model year 21 again. Why didn't this one get a top safety pick? It's because the crash avoidance category is missing the vehicle to pedestrian rating, since apparently the system on this model year wasn't able to recognize pedestrians and react accordingly. If you didn't come to this website looking for a specific vehicle, there are two convenient ways to find top performing cars. For the first way, you will go back to the starting page and click on award winners. Here you will get a list of all vehicles that earned this year's top safety picks. You can filter for vehicle types and makes. For the second way, you will click on current models on the starting page. Here you will get all results, not just the ones with awards. To find our X5, we can select mid-size luxury SUVs and scroll down until we see it. This is also how the IHS makes finding safe vehicles a little more convenient. You just have to select the vehicle type you want and go through the list which already recommends vehicles to you by means of the top safety pick awards. As you can see, the IHS also finds that the Volvo XC90 and another Tesla are very safe choices. The best results in this vehicle category are earned by two Acuras, which we didn't even look for on the US NCAP website. So checking out the IHS was definitely time well spent. Now, what's the final US verdict on the X5? Without even going into too much detail, we have noticed that there have been active safety upgrades on this vehicle during the past two years. So if that's something you value, then it's maybe worth the extra money to invest in a newer vehicle than a model year 2020. We also learned that investing into higher trim headlights seems to be advantageous and must definitely be noticeable if it bumps the rating from the low end of the scale to the upper end. Overall, the X5 is a safe choice, so if it's the car you desire, then I wouldn't have any safety concerns with it. If you're dead set on finding the safest SUV out there, the IHS gives you quite a few recommendations that score higher than the X5. Browse through these vehicles and also go back to the US NCAP website to check out the respective car ratings over there once you found your favorite. This concludes the search for all of you American citizens out there. For all Europeans, we will now check out the Euro NCAP. With the Euro NCAP, the task of comparing vehicles gets a bit more complicated. This is mainly because vehicles in Europe are handled in generations, not in model years, as in the US. This means that if you ask someone what car they drive, they will probably tell you something like I drive the current BMW X5, referring to the fourth generation sold in Europe since 2018. Or they'll tell you, I'll drive the previous X5, which would most likely refer to the third generation. Depending on whether they are familiar with the concept of facelifts, they might also just be referring to the current generation before its facelift. While this seems more complicated than just being told, I have a model year 20 X5, this actually has its advantages in daily conversations. Most people don't know in which year every manufacturer introduced new generations of their vehicles, so the phrase current X5 might actually tell them more than model year 20 X5. However, since Euro NCAP operates in the same generation-based system, it requires a lot of insight to compare the safety performances of vehicles that were released a few years apart. Euro NCAP, like all other ratings, update their tests and guidelines every so often, mostly every two years. A vehicle will earn its star rating for the year in which it has been rated. In our case, it's a 2018 star rating, which will then stand for 6 years. If we compare this to a vehicle that was rated in 21 and also got 5 stars, our BMW stars would not be worth as much as the other vehicle stars, since it didn't have to fulfill the requirements updated in 2020. Therefore, direct comparisons are only possible within the same protocol era. With this cleared up, let's take a look at what we can find on the website. We will go to the latest safety ratings and find the current and last year pre-selected. Notice that, as explained, the ratings don't refer to model years, but rather the entire vehicle generation that has been tested. You will directly see the overall rating and the box results for adult occupant protection, child occupant protection, pedestrian and cyclist protection and safety assist. There might be a dual rating for the same car in case optional equipment will lead to a better result. To find our X5, we will select all rating years and filter for BMW. Scrolling down, we will find that it has been rated in 2018, so right after its market introduction. 
As I explained, there have been changes to the program in 2020. My goal is to explain the current rating contents, so rather than going through the details of the X5, we will pick a competitor car that has been rated after 2020, explain the contents there, and afterwards we will have a look at the X5 results and its outdated rating contents. So we will head back to the overview, filter for 21 and 22, large off-road vehicles, and pick one of the better examples in this list. Let's go with the Skoda. Here you see the current contents, which will be updated in 23. By scrolling down, you will get the general vehicle specifications of the tested vehicle, the available safety equipment, a link to the test videos on YouTube, and the history of annual validity checks. Just a word of advice on the safety equipment. This list only tells you which of the commonly used equipment parts are found in this vehicle. There is no indication whether these parts are actually necessary to protect the occupants or other road users. For example, just because there is no knee airbag on a given vehicle doesn't necessarily mean that the leg protection is going to be bad. The same goes for side pelvis airbags, whose functions are many times included in the side chest airbags. A similar story is the active hood, which is intended to soften the impact of a pedestrian which might get hit during an accident. A non-active hood, or passive hood if you will, might be just as capable of a good pedestrian protection rating as an active hood. So do not judge the vehicle on the number of red crosses that you see in this list. This might be misleading. Always look at the rating performance instead. Above these tabs you will find the four rating categories, which Euro NCAP calls boxes. The first one is the adult occupant box. It mainly contains the results of two frontal and two side crashes. In the first frontal impact, the vehicle is hit head-on by a barrier trolley with an overlap of 50%. Both the vehicle and the barrier are traveling at a speed of 50 km per hour. The barrier mass is a constant 1400 kg for all tested vehicles. This makes this test the only frontal impact with the results that you can compare between different vehicles no matter the vehicle size or weight. All other frontal impacts we have talked about so far simulate an impact into a vehicle that is exactly as heavy and exactly as fast as the tested vehicle. Therefore, the results of a lighter and a heavier vehicle are not comparable on those other tests. In this frontal barrier impact, there will be four occupants placed in the vehicle. The driver and front passengers are both average-sized males. The front passenger dummy is the so-called Hybrid 3, which is the same dummy that we talked about on the US frontal crashes. The driver, however, while also representing an average-sized male, is a newer dummy type, called THOR, or Test Device for Human Occupant Restraint. The two occupants in the rear seats are one 6-year-old and one 10-year-old child. Only the two males in the front contribute to the adult occupant box. The results of the children in the back will be accounted for in the child occupant box, which is the second of the four Euro NCAP boxes. It's also the reason why you don't see colored images of those two child dummies right here. With this crash, Euro NCAP also judges the so-called compatibility of a vehicle, which means it would not just rate the protection levels of the vehicle occupants, but also how rough the interaction with the barrier is. To do this, they look at the acceleration that the trolley experiences and at the deformation of the barrier face, which they want to be as homogeneous as possible. The deformation pattern is displayed on this little map in the vehicle front. The second frontal crash is a full width test, similar to the one we saw on the US NCAP. This means that the vehicle impacts a rigid wall at 50 km per hour. On the US test it was 56 km per hour. There are three female occupants in the driver, front passenger and rear right passenger seats. For the first side crash, the vehicle is impacted by a trolley barrier of 1400 kg, which is coming in at 60 km per hour. There will be an average sized male driver and two children in the back seats, one 10 year old and one 6 year old. The children will again be accounted for in the second box and are therefore not depicted right here. The second side crash is a pole impact. The vehicle is struck by the 10 inch pole at 32 km per hour and there are two average sized males in the two front seats. The driver is located on the near side of the pole impact and his injury measurements can be seen right here. The second evaluation done on this test is on the possible interaction of the two front passengers, which has to be prevented by suitable means, usually an interaction airbag. There is also a far side evaluation which is done by means of two sled tests, which simulate the trolley impact and pole impact, only that they happen on the far side of the driver dummy. Here Euro NCAP looks into how well the interaction bag prevents the driver from slipping out of its own seat towards the passenger side. The result is shown in this image. The rear impact is evaluated in a similar way as done by the IHS by means of sled tests and is supposed to judge on possible whiplash injuries which can happen even during mild rear end collisions. Rescue and extrication scores upon numerous questions. Is a standardized rescue sheet available which gives accident responders necessary hazard information? Does the automatic e-call system work properly and does it meet Euro NCAP's data transfer requirements? 
Is there an automatic brake system that slows down the vehicle after an impact? And other questions not directly addressed here, such as were the side doors easy to open after the crash tests? The comment section summarizes the shown results of this box and, if relevant, gives hints towards possible safety concerns. The child occupant box will, first of all, present you the injury measurements taken by the child dummies in the frontal and side crashes, which we already talked about. Secondly, it will award points based on the availability and type of child seat anchor points. And thirdly, give you information about on which seats and how easily the child seats are installable in the vehicle. Note that this evaluation only applies to the manufacturer recommended child seat, which is named here and linked in the table. The child occupant category will also be summarized in a comments box. The third box is about vulnerable road user protection. Euro NCAP is the only one of the three ratings which we looked at that evaluates active as well as passive pedestrian protection. Passive pedestrian protection means that the front bumper, hood and windshield will be impacted by leg and head impactors. In this way, Euro NCAP generates a map that tells you how harsh an impact on a given point on the vehicle would be in case you would get struck by it in an accident. Active pedestrian protection means that, similar to the IHS approach, the automatic emergency braking function will undergo tests to determine whether it can prevent or mitigate collisions with pedestrians or cyclists in different scenarios. Again, this box is rounded out by a comments section. Last up is the safety assist box. This firstly awards points to the availability and function of speed limiters and active speed adaption based on road sign detection or map data. Secondly, points will be given for the number of available seatbelt reminders and their means of alerting the driver and also for available systems that monitor the attention status of the driver. Thirdly, active systems that prevent you from leaving your lane unattendedly will earn you points. And lastly, numerous different scenarios of imminent vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle collisions must be recognized and prevented by the automatic braking system. Once again, this is all summarized in the comments section below. The entire report can also be downloaded as a PDF file, which will contain all the information we just looked at. This sums up the contents of the Euro NCAP protocols for 2022. At this point, let's head back to our list of tested vehicles and filter for the BMW X5's vehicle class. On this website, this class is called Large of Road. As explained earlier, the results are only comparable within the timeframes of no protocol changes. The current period includes the years 20, 21 and 22. For the Large of Road class, there are only 5 star ratings in the current protocol period. To get a distinction, you can sort the results by the achieved score percentage of each box. If you do this for the Adult Occupant box, the Skoda which we just looked at gives a pretty good impression. Since our X5 was rated in 2018, we need to look at the protocol period of 18 and 19. Let's cycle through the sorted ratings of each box. For Adult Occupant Protection, the Model X seems to excel on the Euro MCAP 2, with the Terraco trailing by only 1%. If you put child protection above all, the Mercedes-Benz GLE seems to be a great choice. Pedestrian protection is one box that puts our X5 somewhat further up the list, while it's still outscored by the Terraco. For safety assist, we welcome the Model X back at the top of the list. Based on these rating scores, Euro NCAP will recognize the exceptional performance by giving out the best-in-class awards for each rating year and vehicle class. As seen earlier, the Skoda earned this award in our large off-road class in 21. If we take a look at the X5's rating year, we can see that the Hyundai Nexo earned the Best in Class award back then. Now, neither the Best in Class awards nor the ranking of the vehicle points particularly towards the X5. But you have to keep in mind that most of the vehicle ratings we saw here were 5 star ratings, which in and of itself is a very high standard. So what we need to do is to take a closer look at the X5's rating and check whether we see any red flags. The first thing that we will notice is that in contrast to the US models, the active safety systems seem to have been standard equipment right on from 2018, which is great. Looking at the adult occupant box, we will notice a weak spot on one of the frontal tests. The brown legs indicate a weak driver leg protection on the frontal offset crash. Consulting the comments box, we understand that this isn't due to an actual bad dummy reading during the crash, but rather because the knee airbrake did not deploy as expected and the leg protection score was therefore penalized. Note that in 2018 the offset crash was still conducted with a wall-mounted barrier as opposed to after 2020, when it was switched to the frontal barrier impact. Overall, these results seem to confirm the missing front crash star from the US NCAP rating. On the side pole rating, there only seems to be mediocre protection for the driver torso. In the child occupant box, we will notice that the child protection during the crash tests proved to be very good. The X5 is losing its points due to the fact that the anchor points and child seat installability seems to be reserved for the second row outboard seats only. In the pedestrian protection box, the X5 is losing some points due to harder contact areas in front of the hood, where a pedestrian pelvis might impact. 
The automatic braking, however, seems to work perfectly. The safety assist box continues with more generally good results. However, in the eyes of Euro NCAP, the emergency lane keeping function seems not to work properly. That's it. So let's sum up what we found. Just as for the United States, we found that there are vehicles out there with higher scores for most of the safety aspects. So again, if your goal is to find the safest SUV, you will probably disregard the X5. But if you like the X5 for another reason, you should ask yourself the following questions. Is a lane support system that might occasionally not work as expected a deal breaker for you? Are you highly concerned about the protection your vehicle offers to pedestrians or cyclists you might accidentally contact on the road? Is it a major problem if you can place your child seats only in the two outboard second row seats? If you answered all of these questions with a no, then you should read this 5 star rating as a recommendation to follow through with your plan and keep looking for your X5. If any of these questions was a yes for you, then all three of the rating institutes we researched offer great alternatives for you. 